HSBC just started covering Tesla stock in their first Rating is a reduced rating, meaning they are not feeling bullish at all about Tesla style. Their target price is $146, and this is perhaps one of the main reasons, if not the main reason why Tesla stock, at least earlier today, was down substantially, almost 6.5%. HSBC analysts highlighted the substantial capital costs associated with Tesla's non-core electric vehicle EV projects, including FSD technologies, that Dojo supercomputer, and the recently launched Optimus robot. These ventures are expected to incur above average expenses due to regulatory and technological hurdles. So their thing is basically, ah, uh, don't buy Tesla stock because the company thinks long term and invests in the long term. We're Wall Street. We want to invest in companies that focus on the short-term price of their stock. So we don't like Tesla's stock, basically, says HSBC. They also pointed to Tesla's ambitious goal of achieving 20 million deliveries by 2030 as a significant mid-term challenge. The analysts indicated that meeting such demanding delivery targets could further strain the company's resources. So also, uh, it's bad to have high goals in the long term. Additionally, HSBC emphasized that single man risk brought about by CEO Elon Musk considerable impact on Tesla's business operations and investor sentiment, while Musk's global prominence can boost customer awareness, his high-profile status also poses a significant risk to the company. Welcome to being a Tesla stock investor. Now, what is the chance that this HSBC analyst that started coverage of Tesla stock is going to be right about this? What is his track record? Well, Mike here from HSBC is really a killer investor. He killed his returns this year. Yeah, it doesn't look good. If this is really what is driving Tesla's stock price down so much, I don't think I have much to worry about. Or to be precise, I don't think I have anything to worry about here. It does not mean that we cannot go much lower. We certainly can. And uh, looking at Tesla's history, at some point, it's really inevitable. Just the question will be, will we go down much further from here? Or will we go down from $300 or $400. But reading through what HSBC wrote, I don't see anything concerning really at all. Here's what Gary Black thinks about this HSBC analyst and coverage. The most bearish part is his $146 price target of which 40% comes from FSD, Dojo and Optimus, which leaves just $90 per share in value for the traditional EV business. For reference, we put $300 in value on the EV business based on a 2030 EPS of $22 and a 30x PE and a 13.1% cost of equity. The HSBC analyst Michael Tyndall says his valuation is 50% DCF, 50% based on global tank multiples. Without seeing his analysis, we cannot poke holes in it, but our bet is analyst Tyndall is assigning a multiple based on the tech category rather than his projected growth rate. If so, that isn't consistent with financial theory. We will try to get a copy of the full report, says Gary. It looks like Cruise slash GM just had another disastrous leak. A cruise worker who was laid off today shared this information with me, says Omar. This could be just speculation, but it could be very real. I'm going to relay insider information at this point. Cruise level 4 autonomy is a complete lie. There's intervention and supervision all the time when the cars are out on the road. The executives, higher-ups, wanted more cars on the road, even though we brought up issues that cars were having. They did not care, they just wanted to get more vehicles on the road, to have more funding, and to make shareholders happy. Cruise autonomous vehicles cannot see small children or animals on the road, even when they were out on autonomous mode. And it continues here, even with extremely concerning issues, like I just stated above, they did not care. They still sent max numbers 
of autonomous vehicles on the road. We literally had two auto park failure collisions in the parking lot doing testing a couple days ago. What do you think? Do you think this is credible? It seems uh, there is certainly a possibility uh, and maybe even a good probability that this indeed is uh, very true. But it's not concrete evidence, at least not as of right now, that yeah, it is actually happening. But certainly, uh, things do not look great for GM. This is just another disaster that they are going through. Remember this from November 1st, when the Model X long range wait times were extended again? Well, uh, it was not for the Plaid model, but now the Plaid estimated delivery date has also been extended. And if we only saw this once a month, I mean, it would make sense. It's not really increasing demand because a month passes by and then the delivery wait time gets, ex gets pushed back by a month. It would make sense, but it's happening more than once a month. We could, of course, delete the Model X and it wouldn't really make uh, much of a difference in the Tesla's bottom line long term, but this is still good news. It does signal at least slightly higher demand specifically for the Model X. And now Tesla actually followed through with the promised price increase in China. Is it just $250 like Tesla has done before, which would mean not much? Or is it like $1,000, which would be pretty bullish in terms of demand? Well, it's only $344. So more than $250, so not totally uh, nothing really. But I wouldn't really take this as a bullish sign that signals anything. Not really. But here's what's interesting. They did not just increase the price of the Model Y. They also increased the price of the Model 3. The refreshed one. So this part, I say that's good news in terms of potentially higher demand. But still, I don't think it really means much. Other than Tesla trying to get people to buy the vehicles now instead of waiting for more discounts. Gary estimates that this price increase will produce $200 million in revenue for Tesla next year and will add 5 cents to earnings per share. Gary says that Tesla raised prices in China citing higher costs. If costs are rising in China, they are likely rising in the US as well. Waters published another article about Tesla doing another recall. It only affects Model S's and X's, and it's only 159 vehicles, so it's not really that significant. But uh, the recall is due to the possibility of the driver airbag deploying incorrectly, which increases the risk of an injury during a crash. But it is an over-the-air update, so... This is not really a recall, is it? It should be called a software update. Unless we decide that all software updates from now on, going forward, should be called recalls, Okay, then I accept that name. Troy is pretty happy about this. Model 3 production at Giga Shanghai in October was 28,000. That's excellent and 8,000 higher than I expected. By the way, uh, Tesla usually only produces about 30,000 Model 3s in Giga Shanghai. That was before the refresh. So 28,000 is really good. This could mean more exports for Q1, or it could mean more China sales in Q4. Ideally, the next weekly insurance number should be at least 16,100 in total with 5,500 plus Model 3s. And Troy does not think that the ramp up of the Model 3 will cannibalize some of the Model Y sales because, uh, I mean, you look at the chart and the Model Y sales have been growing together with the refreshed Model 3s. So Troy says no. Model Y sales continue as usual. James is also pretty happy with this. He says that is impressive about the Model 3 ramp and he hopes that Fremont is also able to do that uh, as well later. All right, we finally have the uh, Tesla Cybertruck specs leaked. Every dimension has been leaked. Here are all of the dimensions. I can now take a tape measure and measure if my garage will be able to accommodate this cyber truck comfortably so i'll do that once i fully feel fine i don't want to go into a cold garage and risk getting uh, another cold right after i started to feel quite a bit better interestingly now the headroom in the front is really good but the headroom in the rear is only 39 inches but i i feel like 
sometimes even when one car says it's 39 i get into it and it's all right and then another car it's eh, not really so i feel like maybe they have different ways to measure but 39 for me i'm pretty tall though i'm i'm a bit over six uh six feet 39 for me is uncomfortable i can't really stretch out my my hair bumps into the roof so yeah i'm not I need, I need to sit in the cyber truck really first in the back. For example, I was in this Lexus RX SUV and the front headroom is 39 inches. I put the C down all the way down, all the way down. And it wasn't exactly very comfortable for me. I mean, I just had one ride in it, so it was okay, but I wouldn't want to drive that vehicle every day because I would sort of have to drive like this. <laughs> but in a Model 3, in the back, I fit no problem at all. My head does not touch anything. And that supposedly has even less headroom than that Lexus SUV. So I, 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 I'm not really sure what's going on here exactly. Seems like they measure this in different ways. I think the Cybertruck is probably going to be no problem at all. And we now know that the Cybertruck will have three outlets, two simple ones and one really powerful one. You know, I wonder, would it be possible to actually technically charge <laughs> your cyber trick using one of these outlets? Of course, you lose energy, but is it possible? Italy is really falling in love with the new Model 3. I like going to Italy quite a bit. I've been to Lake Como a lot of times and the Model 3 would be pretty good for these roads because it's fast, but also uh, you won't die probably in it. If you think that these roads are not normal uh, in Italy, in Lake Como, these are, uh, yeah, I've done, I've actually done this quite a few times over there. The first time was pretty scary, but then you sort of get used to it. You just accept it's gonna happen and then you just deal with it. And when there are no cars around you, you don't wanna drive slow because if you drive slow, you're gonna go through many more of these situations. If you drive a bit faster, then you're gonna get to your destination with fewer stops like that. So Model 3 is perfect for roads like this. Safe if you do get in an accident, but also pretty fast and not big, which allows you to navigate these crazy roads. Tesla is down today, uh, but here's what Adam Jonas from Morgan Stanley thinks that Tesla needs to do for Tesla stock to rebound. Number one, Stop missing Wall Street consensus estimates, which is causing continued negative earnings revisions. Number two, successfully launched new vehicles like long delayed Cybertruck, which is about to happen pretty soon. Number three, evolve business model toward recurring revenue businesses like software licensing and services. In other words, Tesla is already on the right track anyway, <laughs> but certainly we will go through a lot more volatility. This is a message from Tesla to one of the customers and it's pretty cool. Tesla Edmonton is holding a customer appreciation event on November 25th, where you can get a free inspection on your car to make sure it is ready for winter. And presumably this is being sent out to all Tesla owners in the area. The Tesla Gigapress supplier has announced that it won a contract from Volvo to install two 9,000 ton Gigapress machines at a site in Slovakia. Elon Musk did say this on one of Tesla's earnings calls that every single automaker in the future he thinks will probably use Gigapresses. So this is not really surprising. Local officials in Mexico have released a rendering of the updated highway and new access ramps that will be built to help accommodate Tesla's Giga Mexico factory entrance. They plan on widening the highway. It's great to plan out this infrastructure so early in advance. Here's something to pay attention to from SMP uh, Mobility. Although range anxiety and the charging network remain reasons to hesitate. A recent global survey of consumers showed that potential EV buyers are most concerned about the impact to their wallet. Farzad predicts that the Saudis will take Lucid private in 2024. He's convinced about this Absolutely. Lucid's market cap is now sitting at $8.5 billion. If it keeps falling further, then Saudi certainly could pick it up pretty easily. Polestar trimmed 
its 2023 delivery forecast yesterday and halved its gross margin target, citing fears of a slowdown in EV demand and global economic uncertainty. If you make if you make really good EVs like Tesla does, you will be fine overall. Jeff has this quote from Polestar. Revenue for the third quarter rose 41% to 600 million, driven primarily by increased prices of its vehicles, but higher expenses led to operating losses, swelling 33% to 260 million. In the United States, Space Force announced they will launch their X-37B Mission 7 on a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket for the first time. There is so much potential in SpaceX. Jeep says they will launch their first EVs in the US next year. Jeep is part of Stellantis, by the way, if you didn't know. Mercedes-Benz is reducing prices across the board. The first price reductions for vehicles were implemented in October. And in November, new models were included and discounts were increased. It seems like a desperate measure to create demand. And remember also that Mercedes has been advertising for many years. Alex says that every one of their EVs is discounted. Oh, this feels a bit like deja vu. Uh, Signature Bank, if you remember that one, needs liquidity for creditors and is selling their $33 billion commercial loan portfolio. Bits are 40% below cost. Ouch. Oh, Tesla is likely to export Model Ys from Giga Berlin to India. Tesla is seeking a reduction in customs duties on the import of completely building up electric vehicles from Germany. According to the information, the government has a positive outlook on this issue. Before, all we heard was no, 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 never, ever, not possible, not gonna happen, stop asking us, <laughs> don't be silly. And now they are uh, reversing, which is... Uh, what often governments do, which is good for for us. So while all of this is speculation, it seems indeed quite possible that Tesla will be importing vehicles from Germany to India to at least test the market. Volkswagen aims to bring an under $35,000 electric vehicle to the US market in three to four years, a senior Volkswagen executive said today. That's a pretty long time though. And most importantly today, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Matt Posius.